Hello YouTube, this is Detroit Borg, and today we're going to unbox the Seagate GoFlex 2TB Desktop USB 2.0 external hard drive. Now this is available in 1, 2, and 3 gigabytes, and it's available with a variety of connectors, and I'll get into that a little bit later. If we take a look around the packaging, you see USB 2.0 plug and play, upgradable for faster connections, including USB 3.0, and again, I'll show you what that means a little bit later. Now you can share files between both PC and Mac. Uh, basically that means you can, the Mac can read this hard drive, it can't necessarily write to it unless you format it properly, and of course I'll show you how to do that. Now back here we see reference to what makes this the GoFlex series. We, uh, you can start with a USB 2.0 now, but upgrade later. And basically what you can do is you can purchase adapters for Firewire 800, USB 3.0, or eSATA. And they don't refer to that here, but you can also buy an eSATA adapter. Okay, I've taken it out of the blister packaging, so let's cut into the box itself. So here we have the drive and it's plastic. Let's see what's in the box first. So we have some literature, quick start guide. Probably won't be using this because I'm going to be formatting this for a Mac. Again, the Mac has its own backup software, Time Machine. So you don't really need anything provided by a third party manufacturer, but it would be nice if Seagate, like Western Digital, had software that worked on the Mac. Here we have some of the accessories. So we have the USB 2.0 cable. Again, this is five foot and the power supply. We also have some more literature in here. GoFlex Desk External Drive. Limited warranty. Here we have the Replica, which is the software they use for backing up PCs. So this is a recovery guide on how to use that feature. Now I'm, now I'm a little surprised to see this disc here, but apparently this is used for the Replica recovery disc. You only use this when performing a full system recovery. So let's take a quick look to see what they're referring to here. So essentially in order to use this as a recovery disc, all you do is install new hard drives into your PC, install the disc into the computer, so boot it up long enough so you can put the disc in, turn it off, connect the external hard drive, power it back on, and you're set to go. All right, let's get the hard drive out of its plastic. So it's actually covered in plastic. I guess you could keep this on for a short period of time if you want to avoid scratching it. That plastic over everything here on the base itself. They all have these little tabs here, so you get plastic panels on every side of the thing. On the top, there's another one on the side here. You can see it's largely shiny black plastic with this dimpled pattern on the side and a shiny dimpled pattern on the top. On the bottom we have these feet or rubber feet. We have the indicator lights. I think these are capacity indicators. We'll find out. That must be the activity light. On the back we have the port for the power supply and the USB 2.0 port. And This happens to be a mini USB uh, port. Now what's interesting about this is it's actually removable. So Seagate calls these adapters and basically if you want something other than USB 2.0, you do have to purchase a separate adapter. So if you want Firewire 800, eSATA, or USB 3.0, you purchase these separately and basically they pop off. So let's see if I can get one of these off. There you go. So you can see the connector. And basically that's all there is to it. On the bottom you see the connector into the hard drive itself. In order to snap it back on, just line it up and you're all set. Now let's go ahead and connect it for the first time. I'm just going to plug in the power supply. And you can kind of hear it turning on, but it's very quiet. It's definitely the quietest external hard drive I've ever heard. Okay, so it's gone into standby. So let me connect the USB. So you can see the status light illuminate, and these are capacity lights, so they'll only illuminate if uh, something has been added to storage, filling up space. So right now we're not going to see anything because we don't have anything on there. So let's go over to our Mac. 
So we see Seagate Replica. Let's open that. So we have some choices here. One of them is Mac Installer. So let's go ahead and install the software for the Mac. So basically it tells me that Seagate GoFlex install software that enhances your drive. While you can customize what is installed, the following have been selected for you. Seagate Diagnostic provides drive management utilities and allows you to test your drive to ensure it is functioning properly. So let's go to continue. So here I see applications, Seagate Diagnostics, Seagate Storage Gauge, and extension Seagate Storage Driver and Paragon NTFS for Mac. The okay, installation is successful and it wants me to restart in order to finish the installation. Now essentially all that installation did for Mac is install this diagnostic panel. So if we go up to Seagate Diagnostics, we see we have the option to go to My Drive. So we see all the Seagate drives attached. So I see my Seagate replica drive. You can see that it's formatted in Windows NT File System or NTFS. And we see the capacity, available capacity, and use space. So it has used 200, almost 250 megabytes. Here I can go to Drive Diagnostics. I can test now. Let's see what that does. So it's being tested probably for uh, any errors on the disk or the platter itself. Now if you look down here, you can see one of the capacity indicator lights has illuminated. Now let's go to the next selection, which is Activity Lights. Basically, all it does is allow me to turn it off or on. So, if you don't want your activity lights, you can disable them. So, if you go over to the drive itself, no lights. Let me go ahead and turn them back on. There you go. Unfortunately, because this is an NTFS drive, I'm going to have to format this for HFS, which is the file system for Mac. So, in order for me to even copy files to this, I'll have to go to Disk Utility. So we're going to go up here and select the Seagate replica. We're going to go up to Erase. We're going to choose Format in Mac OS 10 Extended Journaled. We're going to go to Erase. Okay, now that it's formatted in HFS, I should be able to write to the drive now. Now here I have a folder full of photos of the MacBook Air, and all I'm going to do is drag it up to the hard drive itself. And it's copying them right to the drive. And there we go, Apple MacBook Air. Now I often joke that this can't be a Detroit Borg video unless I compare it to previous generations just like I do with all my Apple products. I do have quite a few Seagate external hard drives. Here we have probably one of Seagate's earliest external hard drives. This is actually a very good unit. This had all the ports. This is actually 750 gigabytes. It was available in one terabyte at the time. It was quite a bit more expensive. I think they retailed for about $400 at the time. But it has this very solid bronze colored metal enclosure. Now what I really liked about this hard drive is that it had eSATA, USB, and both FireWire connectors. It also had some very neat lighting effects. I'm going to plug it in so you can see it. It also had a little capacitive touch button here for powering it on and off. It was a little buggy. It didn't always work too well. But you basically hold your finger here to turn it on and off. Now the next Seagate drive also had a very neat design to it. It had this lighting pattern on it. And again, I'll light this up so you can see it. Uh, but this was all plastic and had this really flimsy pedestal, which I don't really like. It pops on and off. Often it falls over. Let's get this back on. Uh, this was only USB 2.0. In fact, this is what is attached to my time capsule as additional storage. Uh, but I'm going to be retiring this one. So you can see it actually had that same trapezoidal shape of the original model. But again, uh, this had quite a bit more lighting effects going on than this one. So here you see the neat light panel on the top. Runs all the way along the side. Not on the back. It's a really neat effect. And again, you had this nice little touch controller down here to turn it off and on. None of the hard drives now have power switches like this. So you can see it sort of dims down like that. Let me turn it on again so you see. You can see it sort of ramps up, gets a little brighter. And it sort of pulses in the middle. You'll, you can't really see here, but there's a brighter light in the middle that sort of pulses with activity. You can kind of see it there. So here we see that Seagate logo glowing and the star pattern around the side of it. Let me turn off the light so you can see it. 
There you go. And that's also pretty neat, but it's not as cool as the original model. And as you can see, the new drive is quite a bit smaller. They're both three and a half inch hard drives. Again, this is 750 gigabytes. This is one terabyte, and this is two terabytes up to three terabytes. This pedestal is not removable, but this had all of the connectors you needed at the time. So it had eSATA, USB, and both FireWire connectors. This is only available in USB 2.0. Uh, and this, of course, is available with different connectors if you buy the adapters. All right, guys, that's going to do for me. This is Detroit Board with a look at the Seagate Free Agent GoFlex Desk external hard drive. Thanks for watching.